Elizabeth Bennett is one of five unmarried daughters in the Bennett house, and their mother is obsessed with finding suitable husbands for her daughters. When a young bachelor by the name of Charles Bingley moves into town, Mrs. Bennett sees an opportunity to marry one of her daughters. The girls attend a ball where Mr. Bingley is present, along with his best friend, Fitzwilliam Darcy. Mr. Bingley shows interest in Jane Bennett, the eldest Bennett sister, and encourages Mr. Darcy to dance with Elizabeth. The man refuses, letting out a rude comment on Elizabeth's appearance in class, loud enough for her to hear. What follows is a chaotic relationship between the two young people, as they must both work on their pride and prejudice to be with one another. The story so far, the novel opens with what was then considered a universal truth, that a single rich man must be looking for a wife. When such a man arrives in a new place, no matter what his feelings may be, some mothers may feel that their own daughters deserve to marry him more than most. Mr. and Mrs. Bennett talk of a new arrival. The estate of Netherfield Park has been taken by a young man from a rich background who moved from the north of England by the name of Mr. Bingley. What is his name? Bingley. Is he married or single? Oh, single, my dear, to be sure. A single man of large fortune, four or five thousand a year. What a fine thing for our girls. What do you mean? My dear Mr. Bennet, how can you be so tiring? You must know that I am thinking he could marry one of them. Is that his plan to live here? Plan? Nonsense. How can you think he would want to live here? But it is very likely that he may fall in love with one of our girls, and therefore you must visit him as soon as he comes. Oh, I see no reason for that. You and the girls may go, or you may send them by themselves, which perhaps will be even better, for as you are as beautiful as any of them, Mr. Bingley may like you the best of them all. My dear, you flatter me. I certainly have had my share of beauty, but I do not pretend to be anything extraordinary now. When a woman has five grown-up daughters, she ought to give up thinking of her own beauty. But usually, a woman has often not much beauty to think of in such cases. My dear, you must indeed go and see Mr. Bingley when he comes into the neighborhood. That is more than I want to do, you can be sure of that. But consider your daughters. Only think what it could mean for one of them. Sir William and Lady Lucas are determined to go just because of that. You know, they visit no newcomers. Indeed, you must go, for it will be impossible for us to visit him if you do not. You are too careful, surely. I'm sure Mr. Bingley will be very glad to see you, and I will send a few lines with you to tell him I fully agree he can marry whichever he chooses of the girls, though I must throw in a good... I would rather you didn't. Lizzie is not a bit better than the others, and I am sure she is not half so beautiful as Jane, nor half so good-humoured as Lydia. But you are always giving her the preference. Mm. Well, that is because our other daughters are all silly and ignorant like other girls, but Lizzie is quicker than her sisters. How can you speak of your own children in such a way? You must find it funny to embarrass me. You have no sympathy for my poor nerves. You are wrong, my dear. I have a high respect for your nerves. They are my old friends. I have heard you mention them a lot these last 20 years, at least. Ah. You do not know what I suffer. But I hope you will get over it and that you live to see many young men who win 4,000 a year, like Mr. Bingley, who will come into the neighborhood. It will be no use to us if 20 such should come, since you will not visit them. 
You can be sure, my dear, that when there are twenty, I will visit them all.